Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial of the Dime Scheduler mobile app. As you know, Dime Scheduler is a resource and project planning solution for ERP, CRM, and other line of business systems. The target audience has always been the planner that makes the schedule for consultants, technicians, machines, vehicles, and any other kind of resource. So it never actually had much functionality for the resources themselves. And this has come up quite a few times when meeting with customers who want to go full circle by having some support for the people on the road and in the field. We've addressed this with the brand new mobile app. And in this video, I'll take you on a quick tour and show you how to install, configure and use the mobile app. So let's get started. As you can reasonably expect, the app is available on Apple's App Store and Google's Play Store. I'm going to use a Samsung Galaxy tablet today, but the process is exactly the same for Apple devices. If we go to the Play Store, we simply need to look for Dime Scheduler. For your convenience, there are links around this video that will take you directly to the app in the store. The app is free, so you don't need to pay anything to run it, and then we can go ahead and install Dime Scheduler's mobile app. This will take just a few seconds for it to complete, and then we can dive into the app's functionality. The app has been installed, so let's go ahead and run it. And here comes the tricky part, because we need to log in, and to do so, we need to talk to the mobile backend that the IT department in your company or your IT partner has set up. In short, the mobile backend is responsible for fetching your data and sharing your location back to Dime Scheduler. If they have done their job correctly, they'll have done two things. First, they'll have created a user account for you in Dime Scheduler, and you should have received an email to confirm your account and set your new password. And secondly, they'll also have sent a memo with the link to the mobile backend. And we'll need both pieces of information to log on to the mobile app. So let's continue. And I'll enter my user account, which is my email address and the password of my Dime Scheduler account. The first time that you use the mobile app on your device, the app will ask for a link to the mobile backend when you hit this sign in button. Then a mobile window will pop up and prompt the address. And make sure the value enter is correct, otherwise you won't be able to log in. I will use the service in our internal demo environment, which is this link over here, and then I can submit the settings and the app will try to log me in. When it has logged me in successfully, you won't see this window again. Great, we're now finally inside the app. And you can see it has taken me directly to where the action is. What you're currently seeing on screen is my schedule. This is where you'll see the planning that has been assigned to you and only you. Every other user will see different data, which makes sense because it's likely that you have a different calendar than your coworkers. I'll go into more details in a minute, but let me first tell you how we've designed the user experience. It's pretty standard though, We've made a number of screens that all have their own purpose. All pages can be accessed through this hamburger menu at the top left corner of the screen where those three bars are. If you tap on it, it will expand the menu and all the pages that you can access will be visible. In the next couple of minutes, we'll go over these pages, but generally speaking, there are three types of pages. Pages for scheduling, pages for setup, and pages with more info and text on how to use the app and get support. So let's go back to the My Schedule view. If I don't want to reload the screen, I can simply swipe the menu bar to the left to make it disappear. When you log in, the app will look if there's a schedule for you. Now, it is possible that the My Schedule view won't be available to you. You see, the planner in Dime Scheduler must link the email address of your user account to a resource in Dime Scheduler. Otherwise, the app wouldn't know which resource to use to display in the My Schedule view. So if you want to see your schedule, but you can't, contact the planner or the administrator to make sure they set your email address 
in the resource setup screen of the main planning application. The fallback is to show another screen, the all planning view, which I'll get to in a second. But let's assume a resource has been assigned to my user account and then you should see something similar as what you're seeing on screen. The starting page here shows my schedule in the timeline view. By swiping up and down, you can move back and forth the timeline to check your schedule. As you move up and down, the app will load additional appointments, which are these colorful blocks you see in the middle of the screen. So you can see here that I have a few appointments on the week of November 1st. If I don't want to swipe all the way down, I can use the date picker at the top and then select the date of interest. If I want to go back to today, I can tap on the calendar icon at the top right corner. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a tab bar with four items. The first one, schedule, is the screen that we're currently seeing. But we can look at my schedule in three other ways. We can see my appointments in a day view, a week view, or a month view. If I tap on the day view, we can see the same schedule, but rendered for just one day. And by swiping left and right, we can move up and down the timeline. And here too, we can use the date picker at the top of the screen to navigate to a given date and time. And it's the same story for the remaining two views. If I select the week view, we can see my schedule for this week. And you've guessed it, we can see our schedule as well for the entire month. If I tap on a day, it will show the appointment for that day in the bottom half of the screen. Let me go back to the schedule view so I can explain the next topic. You'll have noticed some of our appointments have a different background color, as some even have a thin colored line at the bottom of the appointment. Dime Scheduler uses a flexible color coding system to allow planners, and anybody else for that matter, to use this color coding to represent some kind of status or any other property that's useful so you can distinguish between your appointments easily. Say you're working as a technician in the heating and air conditioning sector. You could use this color coding to show repair jobs for central heatings in red, while you could show the air conditioning jobs in blue. This way you'll see directly what kind of work you'll be doing and ensure that you take the right tools in your van so you don't have to drive home or to the warehouse to pick up the right equipment. After a while, you'll know by heart what those colors mean, but if you're unsure, you can always tap on the appointment, which opens up the appointment card. The two chips at the top will tell you the meaning of these colors. So in the appointment card, we have four tabs at the top, and they provide more information on the appointment. The first step provides general information of the appointment, like the subject, the body, starting and end date, and so on. The second tab shows the location of the job. It will add a pin to the map, and then you can zoom in and out as much as you want. At the bottom of the screen, there are two buttons. The button on the right allows you to copy the job's address to your device's clipboard. The button on the left opens an option menu that allows you to show the address on Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Google Maps on Chrome. If I use Google Maps, it will show the location in Google Maps, and then I can use that application to navigate to the customer site. Let's go back to the card and navigate to the third tab of the appointment card. This tab shows who or what else has been assigned to the job. You might be working in a team, or you might have to take some special equipment to the job. Whatever it may be, it will pop up here. And finally, the fourth tab shows notifications for this job. They could be warnings on traffic or special instructions where to park. It could be anything that the planner thought was worth mentioning. So that's about it for the My Schedule view. Let's move on to the second screen, which is the All Planning view. This is the view that you get to see if your user account hasn't been assigned to a resource. I will go over this bit a little bit faster because the functionality is roughly the same as the Maya schedule view. The main difference here is that we can see the schedule of multiple resources in the timeline. 
and the timeline here is shown horizontally, where each row represents a resource. By swiping left and right, we move up and down the timeline. Again here, we can use the date picker and the go to today button at the top right. And here too, you can tap on appointments to see the appointment card. Through setup in Dime Scheduler's main planning application, administrators and planners decide whose planning you get to see in this view. For example, they could place you in a certain team or department, so you only get to see the planning of those team members. In addition to that, you could also make a sub-selection of the resources whose planning you can see. At the top right corner of the screen, there is a button that opens a list with all the resources you have access to. By tapping on the checkbox column, you can make a sub-selection of the resources of interest. The result of this will be that you will only see the schedule of the resources we selected in this list. The app will save these settings, so it will apply this filter the next time you open this page. As you can see, the timeline shows every hour of the day. Depending on your line of business, this may not be necessary. You can define a custom range in the app's setup. If I open the menu and select settings, we see in the middle a slider that allows you to define a start time and end time for all the timeline-based views in the app. So what we set up here will be applied to the My Schedule views and the All Planning view. So let's set a range between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And don't forget to hit the Save button. If we then have a look at the All Planning view, we'll see only the selected time frame we just configured. And it's the same if we take a glimpse at the My Schedule views. Let's move on to the next function, which would be the Location Tracker. You could use this app to periodically update your live location so the planner in the office knows where you are. So you can use this information to make last minute changes to the planning. It's up to you though to decide when and at what times the app should send an update to the planner. The app runs in the background and checks every 50 minutes or so to see if it may send your current coordinates to the planner. You can set up your tracking schedule in the tracking settings screen. For every day of the week, you tell the app whether it may track on that day and if so, at what times. By default, tracking is disabled. You can turn on the tracking and you'll need to give the app permissions to do so. In order for the background service to work, we'll need you to always allow us to check. I know this is confusing, but we need the device's permission first before we can narrow it down and apply your preferences. So we really don't check your location all the time, only the times that you configure in the table below. You can modify the tracking times by tapping on the arrow icon. Let's say I don't want to send updates on Wednesdays. I can do this by simply turning off this switch. And also on Fridays I leave early so I don't want my boss to know where I am in the afternoons. So I'll set the ending time to 12 p.m. for example. If I'm happy with the setup, I can just tap the save button at the top right corner and those settings will be applied immediately. If you're going on holidays or you're just going to be unavailable for a while, you could temporarily pause tracking. To add a break, tap the button in the middle of the screen where you'll initially see nothing, but this page shows all the date ranges during which the app won't send any updates. To add a break, tap the plus button at the bottom and then you define the range there. So let's say I'll be out next week. So I'll just make it start on November 7th and then end it on November 13th. Tap the add button and the app will immediately take this line to account when it's running in the background. If you want to do a quick check if everything is working properly or if you don't want to wait for the background service to update your location, you could manually hit the share location now button at the bottom. I should point out that we are at the mercy of Apple and Android to run this background service reliably. 
based on a number of variables like remaining battery life, CPU, memory, how much you use the app and so on, the device will schedule background runs accordingly. Android seems to be pretty reliable, but Apple has a strict algorithm. So if you haven't used the app recently, it is likely that Apple will suspend the background service until you use it again. So if the actual location is mission critical, you should look into specialized location trackers. That said, if you use the app often enough, even on Apple devices, it can operate smoothly without interruptions. The remaining two pages are sort of mandatory in that we share our privacy policy and a page with frequently asked questions. In addition to that, we have a lot more information of our software on docs.dimescheduler.com slash mobile. So this was pretty much everything that's currently available in the very first release of this mobile app. We're obviously going to build much more functionality, but we're gonna let you decide. Our roadmap on the mobile app is pretty open-ended, and we're going to let the community tell us what we need to do next. So make sure to reach out and tell us what we need to do.